Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Painting in Place. I'm Scott, and today is the last day that we are doing our Halloween spoopy season uh, special, and we are finishing off with a fun piece of scenery uh, that <laughs> I've got a story to tell about, uh, but this 3D printed crypt. So this is going to be kind of the, the centerpiece of our graveyard. Uh, I really like how it is looking um, but like I said, I've got some, I got some fun stories to tell about this. Uh, before we get started, uh, first off, big old thank you, uh, Fire Granite Snake, hello, and, uh, thank you for, uh, let me make sure I've got this, that is your fifth month, uh, so thank you for being a member of our tavern here for five months, pull up a chair, we've got your regular ready to go. Ah, uh, so, it's such a, such a great start to go off to, let me, uh, Get this over here and say hello to a few other people. Uh, Eric, Lazy Gothy, hello to you as well. Uh, Zagmeister, Lachlan O'Leary, mods, how's it going? Don't cause any trouble. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nightbot, you're a robot and we only talk about you in weird situations. But I think I've got the right Nightbot set up. Cool. So I think that is, uh, that's everything. Uh, let me see. Uh, quick announcements before we get going. Uh, we've got our new show that is coming on Wednesday. Very excited for that. Uh, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Tune in. It'll be here on Twitch. I think that's everything. I think that's everything that I got. Yeah, we've been having a lot of fun here uh, with the, the the Halloween special. You're going to miss most of the show on Wednesday, Zag. What? Well, that's okay. We, we'll also put it up on YouTube. You'll be able to see it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we've had a lot of things going on here. Uh, we have, well, you know what? We'll take a look at everything at the end. Let's go ahead and just dive dive right in to the uh, the main cam here, so we can get a close look at this uh, this mausoleum that we are. Well, not mausoleum. This is technically a crypt. A mausoleum is a much larger piece. And well, let me tell you a fun little story about three D printing really quick. So this uh, this little bugger right here took about six hours to print. Um, and you can see it's got some, some pretty decent details to it. I have hit it with a filler primer so that it does cut down on the print lines. You can actually see, uh, some of the print lines here on the bottom. Um, now I don't have my settings in perfectly, uh, settings change over time based on, uh, temperature, age of the filament that you're using. Uh, I've actually had to make quite a few repairs on this thing. These little uh, doohickeys up here are actually super fragile. And as I was cleaning it up, uh, I think at least three or four of these broke off, so I had to fix them. Uh, you can see actually one of the major repairs on this piece over here. This pillar out also just popped all the way out. This piece here didn't print properly. Um, so what happened with this is the, um, uh, the printer works on this in layers, so it is constantly like going up and up and up and up and up and dropping new layers of plastic down. And when it got up here, uh, it actually pushed it off to the side and continued to print it in that fashion. And at first I was thinking I might just um, cut it out, glue it, and put it back in, but I kind of like the look of it. I think it adds a little to the story of this piece. It might make it look like uh, over time with age, it's just pop, popped away. Leoric, Shady Scott, hello to both of you. Uh, how are you doing today? I hope you are having a fantastic day. Uh, but... Uh, you can also see a couple other misprints where there's a hole in the roof over here. Uh, no idea what uh, what that hole is for. Hello, Reskin Raven. How's it going? Uh, so that hole just happened. It's not part of the file. It happened in the print. Um, so I think that's going to add to a fun uh, story as well, where we're going to paint this to look like wood, and it'll just look like that's been eaten away with age. Now, I do want to show you actually ended up printing two of these. Now, the reason that I printed two of these is um, I printed this one first, and you can see the detail quality on this first one is just, it's not great. Like, it's still, it looks like it is what it is, but it, it looks blurry, you know? Uh, and that happened for a couple of reasons. One, I printed it at a lower resolution, Two, I accidentally printed this thing at 100% infill. Now, what does that mean? Well, this one here, let me go ahead and take this off here. I'm going to have to rebase it before we get going. 
Uh, uh, so this here was printed at what was called 10% infill. So this thing is, uh, aside from the walls that make it look like the thing, it's about, it's hollow on the inside, except for 10% of it. It's it's filled about 10% on the inside. So as I, as I put this down, you can hear it's pretty light. This sucker, I accidentally printed at 100% infill, meaning that this thing is a solid brick. And as I put it down, you can hear. Um, now with that, the infill, uh, because it was printed at that high infill, uh, the insides of it were trying to push out of the edges. Um, so this didn't turn out as good as I wanted. Dragon Mage, hello, how's it going? Working from home today, Rezkin. Awesome, snow days are fantastic. Love the whole working from home. That is great. Um, yeah, so the quality on this one just wasn't what I was hoping for. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this piece because it doesn't look horrible. You know, if you put this on a table, you paint this up, it, um, I think it'll, it'll still look good. But I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't know if I'm going to uh, give it to one of our local uh, game shops that they can use for their terrain. I don't know if I'm just going to, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If, it, if anyone wants this, let me know. <laughs> I made Faulty Boy. Ayo, hey, how's it going? How are you today? But yes, so this is the one that we're going to be painting today. Turned out much better. It's a lot lighter, and I'm really excited to get going. As I said, it's already been based in the filler primer, which got rid of a bunch of those print lines. So I think that's enough of me talking. Let's just go ahead and start painting this thing. Uh... Snow and sub 20 degree temperature for the win. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I do miss uh, those colder temperatures. I know right now here in uh, in Los Angeles, it's, it was actually kind of cold last night and this morning. Now, by kind of cold, I don't mean, you know, it's not going to snow or anything here. Um, it's, uh, but it was nice. I didn't have to have like a super heavy blanket on. Woke up and actually was able to wear kind of like a cardigan. It was, it was great. I miss it. Bun Buns, I uh, love you talking me, uh, talking though. Aw, thank you, Bun Buns. I, I kind of like talking. Uh, <laughs> Sorry you couldn't make the last few streams. Faulty Boy, no worries at all. We, uh, you know, you don't have to come to every single stream. We, we love just being able to see you pop in as often as you can. Crandall95, my gosh. We, speaking of people who we haven't seen in a while, it has been forever. How are you? How have you been? Yeah, ex exactly. It, it's it's relatively cold. It never gets cold in Los Angeles, uh, but it does get relatively cold, comparatively cold. Um, super windy here. Low 50s in your room when you woke up. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get started. I've got some... Um, Oh gosh, what am I? What am I even trying to say? I've got some reference images pulled up, and I think we're gonna be looking at a lot of grays. It's like grays happened uh, <laughs> in in graveyards. People people like you using grays, and I mean it's a lot of stone. So let's look at some decent grays. I might. I like this London gray. I think the majority of the structural stone is going to be this. Hmm. Yeah, uh, the, the majority of actually, I think the stone work is going to be this London gray. We'll have them be that kind of darker stone. We can move into a... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm having a tough call with this, you guys. Oh, I got some, and there's actually some cleanup that I need to do. I love 3D printing. Uh, it has created some wonderful opportunities as far as things that can go onto a player's or uh, a dungeon master's table. Um, but I definitely need to recalibrate my printer since moving. It is, uh, it's off. It is definitely off. Also, I need to get myself, there are still, oh no. There are still things that have gone missing in the move. For example, I can't find my replacement uh, X-Acto blades. So right now I'm trying to make all of these cuts with a dull blade, which I might as well be using a metal toothpick at that point. It's not 
great. All right, I think that'll do it. Um, all right, I lied. We're actually going to use the darker gray for... Uh, darker gray for the stonework. Lighter gray uh, for the structural work. And then an even lighter gray for the pillars. I think that'll be kind of cool. Grandel 95, super crazy work schedule. Had your sleep schedule all over the place. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope that your sleep schedule is somewhat back on a normal track or all the way back on a normal track. That would be even better. Alrighty. And let's just get right down to it. We've got some uh, heavy construction happening directly across the street from us. So I hope that that's not going to be too much of an issue. Let me know if the uh, sound starts to get weird because of that and see what we can do. Now this is one of those pieces that uh, I maybe should have um, spray painted a color. In fact, even as I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I could have saved myself probably a good 30 to 40 minutes of work if I had just based this in my army pa army painter spray primer and primed it in uniform gray. Uniform gray is a decently dark color. Um, it would have matched the tombstones really nicely. So you know that would have that would have been good. Might have been smart. Oh my gosh, I'm way off center on camera. Jeez. Hold on, let's let me fix something here. There we go. That should be better. <laughs> great bun bun, great. So I know the uh, Colorado folks are experiencing some heavy snow. How is everybody else doing? <laughs> Negative 20 degrees. Um, I remember once in Colorado where I, I went to university out there, uh, we actually had negative 20 degree weather. That was... A rough day we had uh, and our school did not postpone classes uh, a few of them uh, a few of the teachers were just like okay uh, this is ridiculous we're not gonna have classes don't show up um, but a couple of the instructors were very much in the uh, nope you will come to class there's one teacher in particular at our school uh, dragon mage you you might remember this um, we had um, a movement class and our teacher had said hey I know it's cold out but we're still having class and kind of all of us collectively stood up and decided no and <laughs> did not go because the news was saying hey if you go outside for more than uh, five minutes, you will get frostbite. And it was a 15 or 30, even 30 minute walk to the class. So it was not gonna happen. Now in that teacher's defense, I'm pretty sure uh, we had like a big project that was happening that day or something. Uh, still though. <laughs> Yeah, Dragon Mage, that was, um, fun memories. Now, I'm thinking we're, we're getting this, uh, real, this dark, dark gray, almost black going down. 
uh, for our main stones, and then you know, we're going to have a lighter gray for everything else, and the, the dry brushing on this will also do some, do some pretty cool things. Just about to start uh, bun buns. Is that just about to start work? I'm, I'm guessing that that's work. Yeah, actually, uh, Redskin Raven, how is the, like, I know there's been a bunch of fires out there. I hope that the snow has perchance abated the fires. Hearing the sounds next door, they're um, they're building a home, and it's been a lot of fun to watch this uh, structure be built from the ground up. However, today they're on the power tool day. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> the teacher sounds insane and mean. She, um, and she had her days. She had her days. Okay, good. I'm glad to see that they have been, um, you know, contained quite a bit. Lifted the evac zones. Good. Okay. Well, that certainly puts my mind at ease quite a bit. What is everyone else up to today? It's uh, got some working from home, which is always great. I always forget that you know it's 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 on a Monday that we do these. <laughs> It is still technically that that whole miniature Monday. There's a new brush fire in Cali near my buddy. He's blocked from evac zone right now. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I um, I don't know. I need to look up. But this morning. Uh, it looked as though there was some, it looked as though it was raining a small amount of ash, which you never, you never like to see that. You never like to see it. I need to double check and see if my area is on fire. There's another little bit that I need to remove. Actually, could you all let me know? I There is some rather severe hammering going on outside. I know I can hear it, but I also know that our microphone is pretty darn good. Uh, let me know if you, if you can hear any of that. Um, then either way, I'll know, and then I can stop worrying about it. I can either just accept it, you don't hear any hammering. Good. Okay. Glad. Glad to hear that. Yeah, it's one of those things when there's uh, outside sounds. Um, it's not that... Mostly, I, j I just... I worry about it. And if I know that you can hear it, that's okay. I at least then know. And if you can't hear it, well, then I'm relieved. No outside sounds. Man. No hammering or power tools running. That's great. That actually... Uh, I'm just super impressed with this microphone. Jeez. <laughs> I 
And this isn't even like our, our powerful microphone. We, uh, earlier this month, we, uh, we hit one of our Patreon goals, which I'm very excited for, um, which means that we get to upgrade our audio studio or our audio capabilities. Um, and one of the things that we're going to do is upgrade to a better microphone. Uh, right now, what we're recording on is a uh, Lux Pro condenser microphone, which I don't even know if they sell them anymore. Uh, it was one of those, it's a, it's a shotgun microphone, so like the sort of microphones that you see in uh, movies or uh, you know, beh behind the scenes when the person's holding up, I'm like, all right, catching sound. Uh, it's one of those. So it's very good at picking up audio in a very specific direction. It's pointed right at me. Uh, but this was very much a discount microphone. We uh, picked it up. It was on sale. I think we got him for like 20 bucks. Um, the issue was we were planning on doing live content with five or six people in the same room. So we needed five or six of these microphones. So we knew we couldn't start off with very expensive, fancy ones. But now we can get the fancy ones. We'll, we'll actually be getting one, uh, a brand and make and model that is um, widely known as one of the one of the better ones. It's like top top four out there. <laughs> Mr. Awesome, he hello, you're. <laughs> How's it going, Mr. Awesome? How are you today? Awesome as always, I am assuming. Already, that is looking pretty cool. Really dark and creepy. Which is perfect for the spoopy season. Just got back from uh, shopping, uh, shipping a gift to your parents for their 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, that's fantastic. What? Uh, first off, congrats to your parents. That is uh, a, an incredible milestone. And uh, what uh, what 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 did you do for them? Would would you get them? Would you get them? <laughs> uh, Lazy Gothy, don't hear music either. Um, no, so there is there at the moment there is no music playing. Um, I. One of the things on my to-do list here um, is to figure out a better way of getting music going. Because um, right uh, the way that we've been doing it, to be honest, the only way that you guys could hear it was if I was blasting the music super loud. And it was honestly getting a little distracting for me. Um, and as we move to the new space, the... Um, uh, the studio got just so much bigger that the old way that I had been doing the music um, was, it, it just feasibly wasn't going to work anymore. So the way that I'm supposed to be able to do it is to be able to play music through my computer, but then also have you all able to hear what I'm hearing crystal clear through the broadcasting software. But the, uh, the last time that we tried that, it apparently was super loud uh, for you guys, but not for me. Like, it was really quiet for me and then really loud for you. Uh, so I'm, I, I just need to sit down and take some time 
fiddle with the software and find a good way of doing it. Because I know it's, it's better with music, it really is. And yeah. Really, I just need a sound engineer is what I'm what I'm understanding. <laughs> it's like I, I understand the audio. I'm I'm not um not a, a, a master at it, but I know enough to I mean I, I audio engineer my own voiceover work so and you know ap's been getting along fine with my current knowledge as it stands so so far so good um got them a picture made of their wedding photo and framed it then that painted on the board saying happy 50th oh yes please share a picture please share a picture i'd love to see it Lazy Gothy, I make the show for you. I can go. You can go without the music. Oh, thank you, Lazy Gothy. Thank you. Um, we'll get music. I'll I'll get music there because I do like painting to music. Um, I I I do. I paint to music. I paint to uh, podcasts. Really, anything I don't have to look at. Also, Compliance Investigator, hello, how's it going? Yes, good afternoon from Chile, Colorado. We were just talking about uh, how cold it's getting up there. Looks like a lot of people have some snow days going on. I should reach out to my mom. I wonder if she got a snow day today. <laughs> All right. And we're almost finished with this color. Off to a great grand start. And only 30 minutes in. Look at this. We're doing great. We're doing great. <laughs> ah, yes. We got some of the... Um... Oh, shoot. What's that band's name? I, I just had it. I, I had it, and then I thought about saying it, and it left. The somethings. The who's it's. The what's it's. The people who sing the music. Da 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 da. The pretend, the pretenders. Ah, uh, close. <laughs> Isn't it the proclaimers? Is that it? Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time since I uh, have seen an acapella group. There was one group that was actually getting somewhat famous in Colorado. Had some great music. Uh, Compliance Investigator, you might remember who they were. Yeah, the Proclaimers, the Proclaimers. are just out pro proclaiming things about how they would like to travel. So that they can prove a point. Just be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. Whew, that is that is dedication. Right, is that it? Am I missing anything? I think that's all for those little, uh, those. Man, that is really dark. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It'll be good. Okay, 
Ah, I'm seeing some spots that I missed on the ground. Bagpipe music for sure. Face, that was it. Thank you, Face. Or thank you, Compliance Investigator. Um, yeah, they were great. I, I enjoyed them. I've got a couple of their albums still. Also, yeah. Uh, I forgot to donate bits on the other show. Still go to the gauntlet. Um, oh, you forget to bit. You forget to bits donate on other shows. Um, yes, let me make sure that's still up, actually, because do I still have, I've got the follower goal, do I have the bit stream, wait, bit goal, do I have bit goal? Come on, I've got the bit goal here, don't I? I don't have the bit goal. Hold on, let me add this. Link, um, bit goal, add source, that's the one. All right, and we're just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna shove it off to the side here. Wait, no, not that. Oh, I can't do this one-handed, you guys. That. All right. So it's there. It exists. So it will track bits. Um, but it's not, you know, in the field of vision of everyone. So yes, Crandom95, bit donations, no matter where they are donated, will go... Uh, we'll always go towards the gauntlet. All right, just doing some touch-ups here, making sure that I got all of the little spots. Faulty Boy, just watch while I draw, so not paying much attention. Oh, Crandall95! Good gosh, he's wanting to be the new chat boss. Uh, thank you. Handle. Thank you so much for the 1,911 bits to become the new chat boss. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. And uh, seriously, thank you. Thank you, Crandall. Thank you so very much. And was that... Actually, wait, did that... That might have put them past their next goal of the, the greater healing potion. They're, they're trying for five greater healing potions right now. They've already gotten one, uh, so they need... Uh, four more. That that may have just given them a second. I don't, I don't know. Seriously, guys. You're, I know. Babs, just whoosh, one hit. Taken down. <laughs> um, uh, we were actually just discussing earlier today how uh, one, one of the other things that we want to do, I'm, I'm going to put a command in... Nightbot, so you all can also see uh, not only what the current goal for the players is uh, that the bits are going towards, but also goals for us as the Adventurers Pack. So you can know also exactly where the bits that you are going to be donating are going to go to for us, like what it is going to get for us to help us to improve. Because um, we are... All of us here are just floored by the generosity of, 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 of all of you. Um, it means the world to us. Um, those of you who have been just throwing bits at us and gifting all these subs and, and being a part of our community, you know, we... I've never been the best at showing gratitude. Um, I, I've never been good at taking compliments or, or showing gratitude or anything like that. I, I have a very just, okay, th like a, a very calm demeanor when it comes to most news. So please know when I when I say that it does mean a lot to us. Uh, it, it, do it really does. And we want to show you exactly where your generosity is going. Um, so... Yeah, that, that's in the works. That that should actually be happening here in the next couple of days. Um, we've got a few goals that we're wait or that we're working towards right now, uh, as, as the as adventurers pack. Um, but I want to chat with everyone and say, hey, which goal do we want to be the one that like you all are directly helping to contribute towards? So yeah, there's that. I can't let Grant Crandall get VIP again this month. We need a new chat boss. Ah, oh, Zagmeister, them's, them's fighting words. <laughs> what is this emote? I don't know. It's like a 
yellow glowing judging person. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, Brewmasters is this Sunday, isn't it? That was quick. Wait, are we already at the end of the we're already at the end of the month? Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> uh Okay, so there's that. Let's go ahead and do now this London Gray on the majority of the stonework. Or not the stonework, but the, the mausoleum. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> ah, sarcasm, irony, or to troll people. So it shall never be used in any of our chats because none of us are ever sarcastic here. Huh. Right. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> the Brewmasters are really getting a uh, a deep behind the scenes. Like you, you guys have spoilers going on with knowing exactly what is going to be coming up in the next labyrinth. Is there a special gauntlet or adventure pack play for Halloween? Um, I do have something special planned for Halloween. I I haven't told any of the players this. So I guess this is me getting outed. Um, yeah, I've got something special planned for Halloween. For, uh, specifically for the gauntlet, I should say. Uh, the other thing that we're, we are doing for Halloween, we were trying to um, time the release of our new show, since it is kind of a, a horror mystery-based show. Ooh, I need some water. Oh my gosh. I can already feel my voice starting to go. And we can't have that. Can't have that. Anyway, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so trying to um, plan the release of our new show around Halloween... And then in addition to that, we have I have something special planned for the gauntlet. I do like doing fun holiday special things. Uh, a lot of my longtime players know that around the holidays, I like to do special events that happen in my Dungeons & Dragons games. Like, things, things go on. Th things go bump in the night on Halloween. Um... Time to get to some nitty-gritty detail work up here. There we go, there we go, and there we go. Oof. Got it! <laughs> yes, the pumpkin heads that, I, that you guys fought. Those are fun. I also really enjoyed painting those. I don't remember i may have done those on a an old miniature monday video i think i painted those on camera it's been a while i can't fully remember got the proclaimer stuck in my head. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Inspiration Point says, Open the Labyrinth has been finished. Ah, yes. So that is, um, that's been there for a while. Yeah. yeah. So, um, or did I accidentally bring that back? Yeah, that was the, um, the challenge of opening up the Labyrinth. So, that is how the first level of the labyrinth happened, is you all, as the audience, uh, had to donate inspiration points to actually open the, the door, or the hatch, that took them there.
hands are super shaky today. <sighs> there we go. Have I had enough water? Probably not. I'll grab some here in just a moment. Finish up this panel. There we go. All right. Whoa. Also, I'm going to move this ever so slightly over so I'm actually in frame. There we go. That's not my OCD showing at all. <laughs> Eat a banana. I don't think we have any bananas here right now. <laughs> Faulty boy, you're really liking the uh, the modified shrub there, aren't you? <laughs> yes, good. Spend those inspiration points on things other than helping the, uh, the gauntlet challengers. <laughs> Alrighty. By the way, I, on the subject of Halloween and the spooky season, I have seen some incredible um, candy shoots that have been designed so that people can give candy to trick-or-treaters this year without uh, them actually answering the door. So that has been really fun to see. Oh, want to test something. Can someone donate any amount of bits just to drop your health some? Um, I don't think <laughs> I know it would be cool if uh, um, it would be cool if you could heal yourself as far as I know you can't I don't know I might be wrong As cool as the stream boss is, I um, can't take credit for it. This is an option that is uh, available to anyone uh, using Streamlabs. Or no, um, yeah, it's Streamlabs. I just thought it was very appropriate for our channel and our show. So I included it.
Yeah, folks, I am already off to a lot of detail work, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best to keep taking a look at the uh, chat. <clears throat> Let me see here. Uh, I'm gonna test it. Zag, who are you? Zag, who are you? Oh, you're doing uh, Team Avatar. That's awesome. Dragon Mage, my girlfriend says she wants, or want, want to try painting interior props, bookshelves, tables, chests. Do you recommend the WizKid kit? WizKids kits. Oh, that's uh, that's great. So yes, I think WizKids does have some pretty decent uh, sets for interior scenery. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I've never tried them myself. Um, all of the interior scenery that I've used, I've printed uh, on, I've printed at home. I will say though that uh, I've never been disappointed in WizKids. So it is a good bet. Yeah, I think they've got a library set. They've got a tavern set. They've got a, um, um, wizard's tower set. You can get like the full sets that have a lot of stuff. And then there's also a, uh, like a town square set. But if you're looking for more interior stuff, uh, they also then have smaller packs of uh, single stuff that you can buy that comes with like four or five, um, pieces. Um, Crandall95, watch another streamer and it lets you heal yourself and he uses Streamlabs, which is why I think you can heal yourself. Oh, okay. That is, um, that's interesting. Maybe we'll have to test it out. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if anyone, if anyone in our audience is new to this channel and watching and is considering giving us a follow. If uh, you give us a follow, that will actually deal some damage to our current chat boss, and we'll be able to we'll be able to test this theory out there. But don't follow just to just to attack the boss. Follow because you like us. That makes sense. Somebody who already shaves their head um, regularly being Aang. Um, his bald caps just never look good. Can you unfollow then follow again? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. If that does work, I'm gonna have to tell people to not do that to attack the boss, because that's that's cheap. <laughs> and it would also destroy our measuring tool to see how many followers we're getting for the uh, the follower giveaway, uh, which right now what it has us at 224, and I think we're actually at 223. Um, so yeah, <laughs> please. Please don't make my life harder. Shady Scott throwing three corgi bits at the chat. Uh, I think, okay, so yeah, that's done some, uh, uh, it's, it's okay, a uh, faulty boy, no, no worries. If you already did that, um, uh, okay, well, if you haven't done it, see, you, you didn't actually do anything. You just, you, d you just asked a question. That's, that's totally fine. All right, Crandall, there's your... There's your chance. You had three damage dealt to you. <laughs> One thing that I also noticed that I, I don't know how I feel about was when Babs gifted a bunch of subs to our channel, and when that happened, um, throwing 89, and look at that, he is healed. Okay. Crandall, and, and then, uh, whoop. Mr. Awesome, throwing 45, thank you guys, throwing 45 bits, throwing 80, 89 bits. Uh, it looks like Crandall, huh. 
yeah, you can do it. Heels are on. Well, shoot. This game just got a little interesting. Our, uh, our last show of the holiday is going to be on Friday. So, yeah. That is definitely going to make things a little crazy. Wait, why was I trying to protect the roof? The roof is going to be painted that color anyway. So with that... It's always satisfying being able to do like the, these blanket strokes of the brush across the whole mini. Although the roof, I'm going to uh, lay the paint down a little thicker um, because you can still see some of the print lines up there. And if paint goes on super thick, it will actually cover some of that up. Things to know when painting 3D printed miniatures. When, at least uh, miniatures with print lines. Uh, if you're painting a resin mini, uh, reskin, <laughs> uh, you know, thin layers. Thin layers are important because you get that perfect print quality from them. This takes me back to painting um, Esmeralda's cart. has a very similar size and feel to it. You have your printer set up to do 0.3 millimeters. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so this one here, um, this high detail was printed at 0.16, I want to say. Um, Faulty Boy, how much do minis cost? It depends. Uh, actually, there's there's a lot of variables in there. So are we, uh, if we're talking store-bought minis, uh, if you're looking at a single mini, you'd be looking usually between 2 and $4. Uh, WizKids, you can get packs from them that will come with two minis. Um, so two minis of a similar type. So like half dragon fighter, uh, tiefling warlock, and you'll get two of the same mini, but in different poses. Uh, they they like to give some variety, and those are around five dollars plus tax a pack. If you are getting, if you go by Reaper, uh, Reaper is the company that I get a lot of my miniatures from. Theirs tend to run. $2.99 to $3 per mini themselves. Uh, if you go, if you, yeah, if you do Hero Forge, uh, so, uh, yeah, if you go off of Hero Forge, if you want to buy one from them printed and delivered to you, uh, I think they run about $30. But if you want to buy the file to print your own mini, that is about $8. Now, I think you can go on, like, websites like Etsy and find 3D printed miniatures for fairly cheap. Uh, where would you find them? If you're looking for store-bought, I always suggest uh, checking out your local, uh, your local gaming store, your local hobby store. So, um, honestly, I, I would go into Google Maps and just search Dungeons & Dragons. Um... Yeah, uh, for anyone get, uh, who's into the hobby or looking to get into the hobby, 
find your local game store, specifically find your local game store that you like. Um, if your options are limited, um, you know, I, I understand that. But if, if you have a few that you can go to, check them all out. They all have a different feel to them. Uh, and find the store that makes you feel comfortable. Uh, yeah, you can check out comic book stores as well. So you, you can look for places that sell board games. Um, the big thing, though, that I'm going to say is uh, places like it's your move or Barnes and Noble. Um, those those sorts of stores aren't gonna have the the minis. It's gonna be places with um, unique names. Like we've got stores out here called Paper Heroes. We've got um, Emerald Knight. Nightwear, Geeky Tees. So depending on the area that you're in, you might have a few options. Um, also, depending on the area that you are in, you might not have those options. Um, if you don't have those options, the two things that I would recommend, you can go to Reaper's website. Um, if you just Google Reaper Miniatures, you can order straight from them and have them delivered to you. Um, and in a final, final solution, uh, there's Amazon. I, I typically don't like Amazon for miniatures because they tend to not have as good of a selection, oddly enough. You know, the, the corporate overlord that has a selection of everything. Now I should, I shouldn't make that joke. Uh, Twitch is an affiliate of Amazon, um, we're we're here. We're all part of the we're all part of the evil. Um, but yeah, like Amazon that is known for having everything actually doesn't have a lot of miniatures available. So yeah, the the website Reaper or Reaper's website is also a great place to to get it. Uh, miniature paints. Yeah, I know. Don't get in trouble. <laughs> all we all bow to the great corporate overlord. Um, we do as they will. Uh, but the paints. So, uh, Faulty Boy, a single bottle of paint uh, like this, depending on the brand, uh, Army Painter, uh, which was the first brand that I ever got, they come out at about $3 a bottle. Um, Vallejo Paint can uh, come up to about 4 to five dollars a bottle and reaper paints which is like the the highest quality version of it um comes out to about the same around five dollars a bottle settle down <laughs> Now, that being said, I've done a video in the past. You can paint these minis with um, any acrylic paint. Uh, like hobby paints like, that you can get in the, the big old bottles. Uh, I think is Apple Barrel is one of those brands or something like that. Um, the, the sort of craft paints that you can pick up at, uh, say, like a Michael's, those will work. Uh, they're not gonna come out. They're they're not gonna be as good. There's there's no getting around that. But they'll still be pretty darn good. You'll need to like water the paints down a lot uh, to get them to a consistency that you're happy with. You're not gonna have nearly as many options as far as colors go. But um, I mean the the lighthouse. Yeah, apple bomb. That, that that's that's the one. Um, but the lighthouse that is on the shelf behind me in some of my videos, uh, that was painted using, uh, like 99 cent paint bottles. So you can get good quality. Uh, I, I believe I said in that video, I wouldn't paint 
miniatures with that paint. I, I would paint terrain like this. I'd paint this with that. Uh, <laughs> boots with the fur, uh, as, as we have learned from the forest, are essential. So, absolutely. You have a Hobby Lobby near you? Yeah, they'd, they'd probably have some of those paints. Again, if you're wanting to paint a... Uh, if you're wanting to paint a miniature like, um, you know, like one of these, that paint is going to be tough to work with. Um, and it might even affect your... It, it'll definitely affect your experience painting. To be honest, I, I would even get aggravated painting a miniature that size with that paint. It's doable, um, but the, the cheaper quality materials you're working with will affect uh, the time that you have. Which is why I would tell people If you want to get into this hobby, if it's something that like, hey, I, I want to, I want to try something, uh, I, I want to try painting something, I would say, find your local gaming store and grab, grab something like a rock golem, um, something that it would be super simple to paint. Um, grab a couple of grays, grab a wash. Um, Get a $15 paintbrush. That's the other thing. Your, your paintbrushes are going to directly affect how well you paint as well. Um, you know, don't get a 99 cent paintbrush and expect that to go well. Uh, the main paintbrush that I use, uh, this guy right here that I've been painting all of my minis with for a very long time, uh, that's like a... $30 brush. But it's lasting me a while. It, it's That is likely going to last me a decade. So, where am, I, where am I going with this? I have no idea where I'm going with this, this line of thought. Um, yeah, when, I, when I first got into painting, uh, the th thing that helped me a lot was I actually went to a painting class. Uh, the folks over at Emerald Knight have a painting class that they used to offer. Um, and, you know, once quarantine is over, I imagine they'll offer it again. Um, but it was once a month, and it was five bucks to join. I think that they may have upped the price to ten now. Um, but it was <laughs> dollars to join. And they supplied everything, the paint, the model... Uh, the brushes, you just had to show up, have a good time, uh, you got to keep the mini afterwards, and the uh, one of the owners of the store, Jay, taught you how to paint. And it, it, everyone was painting the same mini. So Jay had a mini that he had done a paint scheme for. It's like, all right, this is the mini that we're going to be painting. We're all going to be painting the same mini. We're all going to be painting it the same colors. So that way he could teach you technique and you could go from there. So that was really helpful to know whether or not I wanted to really get into the, the painting hobby. And then once I knew, yeah, I want to do this, let's, let's dive in. I want to get myself some paints. Um, the hardest part for me was I had no idea where to start. With, like, what paints do I get? So what we ended up doing was getting a, uh, a starter paint set, which was very helpful. I would never recommend, like, all right, go in and, and pick up five paints that you think you might need. You're, you're never going to pick right uh, if it's your first time painting. So a starting pack, so, so useful. And you can get those fairly cheap as well. Actually, um, 
Oh, Faulty Boy, gotta go. No worries at all. Hope that you have a fantastic rest of your Monday. Hope that you have a great week, and we hope that we'll, uh, we'll see you around. Have a good one. And now the Apple Bottle Jeans song is stuck in my head. This is what happens when I don't have music playing. I hear a, or a song is mentioned, barely even mentioned, and it gets stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, you guys. Let's do a second coat on the roof here. Should be good. Okay, what am I missing? Uh, have I done this one yet? Yep, that one's done. That's a lot of not done right there. Guys, I got so distracted talking to you. My goodness. There are all these pieces on here that we could be painting other colors like this uh this shield right here we could do a nice accent piece on it but crypts tend to not be i keep calling it a yeah this, this is a crypt um tend to not be that fancy um so we're painting this appropriately Put the gauntlet shield on it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Maybe. Maybe I'll do like an etching into it. I couldn't imagine painting these details on this blob. <laughs> So really curious what color we should paint these urns. I'm 
Dragon Mage, can I remind you how uh, to prime a metal mini? You've got one coming in the mail soon and want to make sure all of the detail remains. Yeah, absolutely. You can prime it the, the same way that you uh, prime all of your minis. Uh, you know, make sure you've given it a, a good wash. Um, and if you've got a spray primer, you can use it. There are some people out there who would say that you don't need to prime it. And that's fair. Uh, what I would do personally is I would figure out whatever your main the main color is that you're thinking of painting it, uh, and prime it that color, or you know maybe just prime it a nice gray. Um, if you do just a very thin layer, um, yeah. So like lazy goth used a spray primer on their mini, and it worked out fine. Uh, as long as it's a, th a thin layer, you won't lose that detail. I am a big fan of spray primers. Um, I I want to upgrade to airbrush primers, but I need to I need to up my airbrush game if I'm going to do that. Back to the topic of the quality of tools that you're using are directly going to affect your experience. I have a very cheap airbrush. I know that it's a very cheap airbrush, and it means that my airbrushing experience is not amazing. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Oh, I see another spot I missed. Oh, right, I'm supposed to be painting these as well. Whoopsies. That's going to need another doll. Lazy Gothi, what um, what spray primer did you use? Ooh, it's looking dark and gritty and mysterious. How is Austin coming on all the character art? Uh, well, Lontiel is finished. Uh, so we've got uh, we've got Lontiel, Fess, and Crom are done. Um, I don't know who he's going to work on next. I'm kind of leaving it as dealer's choice with him. Cause I, I, I like the surprise of not knowing. I think next, uh, but then I don't know. I'm I'm expecting. Oh, excuse me, everyone. I have an itch on my nose. Uh, I don't know how it's coming along. Um, I know that his work schedule has gotten crazy uh, with his new job, which I get, I understand, and I'm not going to I'm not going to fault him. Um, but hopefully, here soon, I'll be getting the proof. Of concept for the next character and then he'll uh, stream it I know he typically is going to be streaming on weekends because right now weekends are the only time that he really has to work on those things use Krylon uh, you could have sworn he said Vom was next at some point Ooh.
As you got they used some thick layers only because there were uh, rough patches after you dremeled off arrows and didn't otherwise know how to sand metal. Ah, yep, nope, that, um, that makes sense. I... So for things like that, I... Do I, I don't have it around here to show you. Uh, you can get a really... Uh, you can get a set of small files, um, like metal files, and that is typically what I use to sand down metal minis. I should probably do an episode where I just paint a metal mini, shouldn't I? You know, do all the do all of the prep work, do do everything, so I can I can do one on camera for y'all. But um, that's typically the tool to fix errors on on the mini. You can use a small set of files. Uh, you can pick up a pack of them from Harbor Tool and Freight for like three bucks. And they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. So you have some options at your disposal. And um, yeah. But yeah, thick coats of paint also help hide those. There's a, a place where all of my glue is showing. And I think what I'm going to do to hide the fact that there's a big blob of glue there is uh, do my favorite technique for that and turn it into moss. Paint it green and suddenly it's no longer a mistake. You meant for that to happen. Okay. Doing a final touch-up pass with this color. I say final, let's be honest. I'll be going back over this a lot. Oxy this. Oink, oink, oink. Just getting the paint into those little whole sections. And there we have it. I like the idea of maybe doing this panel separate. Kind of large. Looks metallic. Do that? Do I want to do that? I might be about to give myself a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do it. I think it's going to make it look more interesting. I'm going to paint the the paved section in here this lighter gray. And I'm, ooh, I'm gonna need to do a lot of touch-ups now, but I think it's worth it. I think it's gonna look cool.
right? That, that looks better, right? I'm not losing my mind. Kind of embracing the whole there's going to be touch-ups aspect to this. Because realistically, this down here would have been one of the first steps I would have done. It's the lowest layer down. We're working our way up. Um... So, Crandall, what are all of the major D&D &D streams, uh, like, Critical Role? Have you contemplated doing a collab with any of them? Um, yeah, that, so, I mean, obviously, Critical Role is kind of the big one. Um, who else do we know? There's... <clears throat> um, who else is there, actually? You guys might know better than I do. Uh, there's one that is... the We actually know the people who do it uh, called Dragons and Things. That is a... Uh, it's a Pathfinder stream, and they're actually the uh, like the official Paizo sponsored um, one. Um, yeah, those guys are all our guys and girls are all super nice. They actually a while back when we were first getting started and going, all right, we're gonna we're gonna do this thing. They were kind enough, uh, enough to um, have us over, chat with us about, you know, things to keep in mind, what we should be looking to, to do to start. So they're really nice. Um, I, don't know, I think it, it might be fun to try and reach out and do a collab with them. Um, th there's kind of that... What else is there? There's oh, who's the one that does like the the um, acquisitions incorporated? I don't know if that's a stream or not. And then there's one that is the uh, it's like the father and son group. I think they're they're more they do theirs as a podcast though. Those are the only ones that I'm I'm really familiar with. But I know there's more out there. There's so many out there. It honestly it, it's become a very popular thing to do. Uh, and I get it. We're trying to do it ourselves. Adventure zone zone. Thank you, Lachlan. Uh Rivals of Waterdeep. Those are those are the two big ones. Um, like obviously I'd, I'd love to reach out to folks and, you know, look into do some collabs. Yeah. There's, there's Geek and Sundry. I don't know. Oh yeah. Geek and Sundry started their own since, um, Critical Role left and became their own entity. I forgot that they did that. It's true. There's another one, Dimension 20 is one uh, that uh, Dragon Mage is a fan of, uh, right? See, now that you guys are mentioning the names, I'm like, oh yeah, there's that one. Oh yeah, there's that one. Oh yeah, there's that one. Um, yeah, it, it, it's true. There are so many that you want to, you find the group that is doing the stuff that you like. Um, 
but as far as like collaborations go, it's kind of this mentality that I have of uh, I don't I don't want to. I would love to collaborate with people who I consider like in the, in the same weight class as us. Like I'm not gonna reach out to the folks at Critical Role and be like, "Hey, we're a we're we're D and D stream. We should um we should collaborate together." Because at the end of the day, who who are we? Uh, I I. Uh, love what we're doing but we are a smaller channel um and i if i were to do that it would very clearly in my mind it would be a smaller channel trying to gain clout by reaching out to some of the heavy heavy hitters of the streaming community um i would much rather find people who are within the same range as we are, um, and maybe some people that might be a little bit higher and, and try and collaborate with them on some things. Um, but also just... Collaborations aren't at the forefront of my mind. It's not the thing that I am seeking out of, okay, how can we do this? Um, if one comes up naturally, oh my gosh, yes. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna say no. But it's gotta, it's gotta be right, you know. And then eventually, once we get to a place where, you know, maybe we we get to the place where we are a partner, or not partner. Um, no, it is partner. Yeah. Um, once we become a Twitch partner and have some pretty high hitting numbers of our own. Now, that's when I'd love to look into um, smaller streams to collaborate with, because I would 100% want to do what I can um, to, to raise everyone up. I, I just want everyone to succeed, you know? Shady Scott, I agree. I think it would be a lot of fun to bring uh, characters from other shows onto the gauntlet as guests. Um, so, you know, if you if any of you are watching other shows um, and would like to see characters guest on the gauntlet, let us know. Also, let them know. Because, yeah, it's, it's one thing for me to reach out to folks and be like, hey, we should do something together. But it's another thing for audience members to reach out and be like, hey, um, there's this other show that I watch, and I would love to see you guys do something together. There's just a different feel to it, you know? Silver and Steel on D&D Beyond. No. No. Now I'm finding all these shows, I'm like, oh, that's a really cool name. The, um, one of the other things that I am looking forward to doing um, is... You know, we, I, I had a show in the works before we couldn't have people over anymore um, called the 
um, the DM's corner where we could talk to dungeon masters from different shows and like yeah, interview dungeon masters, um, but also talk dungeon master questions. Um, and that would have been a great one to be able to then reach out to folks and be like, hey, you're the DM on this show. Come on our show and let's start to, uh, let, let's chat. I, I, let, let's talk about you. All right. For funsies, I'm going to use this uh, Vallejo's Blue-Gray Pale on these pillars. And I, I think that's going to give a really interesting effect. See what it does. <laughs> Looks pretty similar to the color I've already been using. Or the the primer color. But you know what? I like it. Mm, do I like it? Am I just saying that I like it? I don't think I like it. Ash gray instead. Oof. Ooh, that was not good. Okay. We are certainly getting there. I'm not liking this color. I was just, I was trying to convince myself that I liked it. It's, these two colors look almost identical, but it's okay. It's okay. Yep. It's almost the same color, but it's not. And I like this one better. Here we go. These are some tricky angles that we're getting to, but it's coming along great. Oh, Nelly. Okay, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, Lachlan O'Leary, the, uh, uh, character chronicles are coming along nicely. So, wow, my gosh, that's a lot of gray in a place that there should be a different color gray. Oh no. Um, really do, uh, Can't wait till I got mine to the convenient current box book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you guys as an audience like hearing the, the dice rolls? And you're like, yes! Here are the die. Here it as it clanks onto the table. All right, I'm actually gonna switch to a different brush to paint these. One that is just 
a little less bulky. Hearing the wind outside for a second, I thought it was raining. It's like, well, now hold on a second. That was supposed to happen yesterday, and it didn't. <laughs> Except for when I roll and you hear all of the dice roll. Yeah, I do roll a lot of dice. That's the, the main reason why I have so many uh, more criticals than all of the players. I just typically roll more dice. I know I've joked about a dice cam. Um, I don't know if I actually have plans on putting a dice cam up. Um, is Manic Pixie Travel, hello to you. How are you on this fine Monday m morning or whatever it is for you in, what, Croatia? Almost 11 p.m. here. Dang. How is work going? Still curious which one is Fess's dad. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're out there. They're out there. Work is good. I'm exhausted and the beginning of my journey back to the States tomorrow. Sadly, I have a show in Florida before heading home. Oh, wow. That was, that was quick. Fess has already said her mom and dad are both in the chat on occasion and we know her mom already. I know. I know. Yeah, Fess's parents are, Fess's parents are great. They are fantastic. the chat becoming just freaking super sleuths like okay we gotta figure this out Fess's dad just went up to the mailbox These pillars got so fragile, my gosh. Definitely an issue with my printer on these. I'll get there. I'll figure it out. I'll fix it. 
eventually. It's like there, there are so many things on my plate right now. I'm fixing my, fixing my um, Ender 3. It's going to have to take a back seat just for a little while. That side is done. I really like how those are popping. And you can see it is definitely different, different colors. I promise there's a reason I'm painting them like that. <laughs> you can't hear Scott? Wait. Oh, okay. That, uh, that made me nervous for a second. Like, wait, how long have I been silenced? <laughs> Spoonkins, no, um, the chat has just been, um, commenting on, you know, how supportive everyone, or Fess's folks are, and how they show up, and wondering who, who, who in the chat name is, is Father Fess. <laughs> We'll, we will give him his anonymity for unless they out themselves. You will not hear it from me. Um, if anyone in the chat knows, don't say it. If they wish to be known, they will make it known. Um. Right. I've got this reverse grip going on. It's... <laughs> This was one of my favorite grips when sword fighting, actually. Who knew that I'd use it a lot in uh, painting? Now, I did say sword fighting and not fencing, because I wouldn't use this in fencing. I used this in, in my stage combat days. There we go. There's that one done. Right, let's there we go. Oh no, still got the whoa. That was a slip of the hand. Wanna see a spin-off of the episode of the gauntlet? It's all your parents playing. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I I can't imagine my parents playing D and I I really can't. Like they 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 weren't anti D and D. They weren't of the the satanic panic bit. It's just it just wasn't really their thing. <laughs> Pretty sure uh, James's dad actually played. 
Actually, I think that his character, um, Vom Stigabashi, is actually an homage. Like, the, the character name is an homage to um, one of his dad's characters. I think. Um, ask, ask James. I might be quoting that story wrong. Um, it's true. You just have a bunch of uh, Crom's family members. Yeah. Can we do an episode where it's just like the Crom family? <laughs> see, now I want to see a sitcom of Crom's family, not Josh's family. Crom's family, <laughs> like a traditional sitcom, like family living room set, but it's just Crom's family. Uh. Okay. Almost done here. All right, there's those. Looking nice. Uh, what now? Got to figure out what to do with the urns. While I'm figuring out what to do with the urns, um, I'm going to work on the roof. If you all have any thoughts as to what we should paint the urns, let me know. Um, I've been seeing like some cream colors, almost some bone colors that could look really nice. Uh, I'm going to go with a, a soft red for the roof. In fact, I'm going to go with... Uh, where's that burnt red that I've been using for a while? Really like that color, and I think that would look, work great. Here we are, burnt red. Hey, Emmy the Odd is in the house. We've just been talking about you and your family. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the chat is going... Yep, I'm, I'm not even going to try and catch up. If, if someone asked me a question in the chat, ask it again, because I'm, I'm not going to see any of that. Uh, okay, let's not use that brush. Let's use this brush. Oh, no, that was a bad hit. Yeah, I like that. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we've got this. Yeah, well, welcome to the chat. I mean, this is... <laughs> Don't worry, we're not talking about you behind your back, but we are constantly talking about you when you're not here. I just, I just want you to know that. Yeah, I like the look of that. Adventures Pack was giving accents now. I still want my sad grandma. Uh, oh, Manic Pixie. Manic Pixie Trap. Manic Pixie Trap. I love this card. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the odd, my gosh, you're at that zero intelligence. Goodness gracious. Um, wait, what? What did I miss? Is the mod you have to listen? Oh, are we are we having the players dress up as their characters now? Is that is that what people are saying? I gotta say, as much fun as I've been having painting the terrain, I enjoyed the most. Um, I, I've been enjoying painting the 3D printed minis. Um, like the actual character minis. Like Fury, the Necromancer. Uh, I, so I think I'm going to start steering more in that direction after the season is done. I'm, I'm going to... Hey, Faulty Boy, welcome back. Um, 
Hey, noting it down for Christmas. All right, I like that. I like that. Oh, ow. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? I I think I'm gonna take my future work more into that direction. I, I like the um. I like the, the doing of the character minis. It's just so much more satisfying. So. Yeah. Just something I wanted to make known. Guys, we've been doing these base colors for two hours now. That is an... Because that's the thing about these larger pieces. Um, they're just so time-consuming. Right, I'm going to get sloppy again. I'm... I know slow and steady wins the race, but we can... Can get a little sloppy with this. that. You know what? These urns on the roof are going to be the same color because they're carved in the same stone. The urn in the front is going to be a different color. These are the same. Emmy having to leave already. Uh, Emmy, miss you. Um, thank you so much. Hope that work is going well. We'll uh, we'll see you soon. We'll see you around. An equal opportunity costume enthusiast. What uh, what costumes are we deciding on for people? Is that what what I was seeing? There's that, there's that, there's that. Um, I have some cleanup to do here. Here. Nice, there we go. Um, these things that were a different color, you know what, we're just gonna do the bolts a different color. Oh, shoot, I just got paint all over the, it's okay. You know what happens when we make mistakes? We correct them. That's it. Hmm. 
Okay, so there's that one. I will at least do the bolts. There's going to be a good amount of detail work on this. I want to get to that so that we can actually do it. There's that. All right, I think it's time for touch-ups, and then it'll be time to move on to washes. Oh, wait, nope, the urn on the front. Urn on the front, urn on the front. It's going to be a little more bone-like. Bone white, here we go. Where do we land on putting the gauntlet crest on the shield? Uh, it's still an option. It's still an option. Now, that is something that would happen. Uh, that, that would be one of the final steps. So, like, engravings, uh, scars, things like that. Um, that happens at the very end of the painting process. So we've got a while to get there. I like this color. Although I feel as though my uh, track record on this mini has been, yeah, I like this color. Hmm, but do I though? Found a Wild West version of Wizard of Oz characters as minis. And I think I love. Well, really? That's all Wild West version. Um, would you post those in our Discord? I want to see those. And that's ringing a slight bell for me. Like, I feel as though I've seen them. But I don't know. Yeah, please send a, li a link um, in our Discord. Oh, thank you, Lachlan. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty dope. Yeah, that's right. I just said dope. And I'm definitely not emphasizing the the p. Dope. That's good, that's good. That's not good. No, that's good. That's good. Ooh, that's not good. Not good. 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 Great. Yarsh Dern, it's just so good. Um, oh, they're by Reaper. Okay. Oh, I do know those. I do know the ones. Yes, those are pretty sweet. Oh, now I want to get those and do them. I think they um, they carry those at my local uh, gaming store. 
I just may have to go pick them up. Come on, brush. Work with me. Guys, I know I, I know we've already determined you can't hear it. Oh, but I've been listening to a jackhammer essentially this whole time. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm mentally stable. They are really annoying. You're in the Discord, can't just can't post or type. I don't know. Oh, it says read only. Okay, so um, what that means is, uh, Faulty Boy, in the Discord, if you look to your left, there are a bunch of different like text and voice channels that you can go into. Uh, so certain channels are read only, and th those are typically where like rules are being posted, scheduling is being posted. Um, so that only certain people can post in there. But then you can see things like general, painting in place. Um, there are a lot of different options. Essentially, it's different rooms that you go into uh, to talk, and different rooms have different rules. Uh, I think you figured it out. Cool. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll help you out. We will help you out. Okay. You guys, we are getting there. I'm on my final, well, hopefully my final touch-up level or layer. Let's be honest, this is a level. This is a level in a game. It gets harder and harder with every pass. Just gonna add a little bit of detail to these. So now it can just look like a very surprised building. Oh! <laughs> yep, that's where my brain is now. I'm just, I'm, I'm out, I'm gone, I've tapped out. <laughs> enjoy your dinner as well. Uh, wait, wait, as well. No, enjoy your dinner. Have a good one. <laughs> Guys, I'm okay. I promise I'm okay. Uh, all right, there we go. Let's get another layer of the paint on the um, the urn. It's looking a little splatchy.
that's good. All right, we're gonna let that dry. Then I think we are good to wash. going in and taking care of any major mess ups here in the dark stone. <laughs> Hydrate! Do I have any water left? Yeah, I still got some water left. I know, they do need a ding in order to get the attention. <laughs> uh, here we go. All right. Now for this, I am actually gonna do some, uh, oh, actually we need to get some uh, dark browns going around the edge of that hole so that it looks as though um, age and rot are eating away at it. None of those. Yeah, oak brown, this will be good. Don't need much. Just need a little. So we're gonna take this oak brown. Now this is something that I could probably wait to do until the um, detail phase. So we're gonna start it now and see what we think. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of black in there, well, um, like this dark in there as well. Mix with the oak brown, I think. Yeah, there we go, there we go, that's what I needed. That looks like it's, it's rotting away naturally. Cool. Let's get our wash on. How do we want to do this? Uh, I think everything, Nuln oil except for the urn and the roof. The roof I'm going to hit with uh, a nice red tone, and the urn we're going to hit with Seraphim Sepia. So let's start with the Nuln oil. Also make sure this thing's dry. There we go. <laughs> I really do like those pumpkins. Uh, the pumpkin shrub. They're so cute. Okay. Uh, starting at the top, going down. Ooh, that is something I need to fix. All right, that'll dry.
Now, highlighting on um, FDM printers or uh, FDM printed minis can actually have the effect where it will then show all of the flaws in your print. So this can sometimes be a step that is disheartening for, um, especially if, if you are, if you don't have your, your printer dialed in. Um, for the most part, I'm fine with with it. You know what? I said I'd do the roof a different, different color. I actually like it in the null oil. I'm just going to do that. Didn't want those back ones. Oh, that's all right. Highlights will fix that. Ooh, I just threw a bunch of Nolan Oil on there. That's going to... I'm set. I'm set for pretty much this whole side of the mini. That was a lot. And as per usual, during this step, I'm just not talking all that much because, well, I'm trying to trying to make sure I can get through all this before any of it dries. Don't want to get any of that cooling going on. Like over there. Oh, that's a lot. Anywhere where it is pooling, I'm trying to soak it up and then use it elsewhere. So again, I use way too much um, wash. What they say about too much of a good thing, even though washing is such a great step, if you use too much of it, it's going to look sloppy. All that work that you put into it is suddenly going to look sloppy. We don't want to ruin it on our last step. Ooh, that is a big old clump of wash on painting that. It's totally fine. That's what it's there for. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna re I'm gonna 
touch up the urn before I wash that. That's looking great. Almost there. Almost there, and then I'll be able to talk again. The final stretch. All right. Now we're going to go through, stop it from pooling up, which it's definitely doing. Because, like I said, I use way too much wash. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm going through with my, uh, the oh, I missed this one entirely. Um, going through with a brush that is dry for the most part and just picking up a wash that has pooled in places so that it gets soaked up into the brush itself. Um, And any areas that are in need of it, I can then redistribute that wash elsewhere. I'm also holding it at an angle to try and convince the wash to go into those areas so that I'm not having to look all over the place to find out where it's pooling. Like I, I know that, okay, it's generally going to pool in this corner because I'm holding it at this angle. If I wasn't such a wash fanatic, I wouldn't necessarily have to do that. But I am. <laughs>
Oh yeah, this came out great. There we go, look at that. And how are all the fences coming along? Uh, you can see I've got a couple of them here that I've still been working on. Uh, I've been working on them kind of in my spare time the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm still working on them. But we'll have enough that I can give you guys uh, like a little bit of a showcase as to what the final, like, hey, here's everything scene is going to look like. Um, yeah, I think our our final here's the culmination of the month is going to be yeah you know, I'll, I'll do a um i'll do a fancy schmancy photo shoot with all of the pieces and get everything set up nice and pretty uh and do a like an instagram post i'll put them on um i'll put them on discord as well basically just make them super easy for everyone to see um, but here at the end of the episode today, we'll go ahead and take uh, some of the stuff that I've got and give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay, so there's that. And we need this to to dry. Cool. And while it's drying, you know what, we're gonna tie this collar in just because I like it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make the cap to this red. Yeah, I think that's a nice touch. Yeah, what do you think? Was that good? Should I leave it the, the way before? I don't know. Maybe it needed to be brown instead of red. Maybe it was good the way it was. Maybe this is good. <laughs> Alright, we'll go ahead and we'll put our null oil away. We are done with that. Man, I'm going to have to get some new uh, null oil here too. Alright. So, waiting for all this to dry. While it's drying, I'll keep washing these. <laughs> this is why I left these out. I knew that uh, we'd have time waiting for the wash of the one to dry. So I'm gonna keep, uh, keep going to town on these. Well, it's drying, I should do an Australian accent. Yeah, is that... <laughs> Manic Pixie Travel, you just want accents happening all the time. It's true. I am supposed to be working on an Austrian accent uh, for you, which... I will admit, I've done very little work on.
There's that one. <laughs> Let's hear it anyways. No, uh, Zagmeister, when I say uh, I've done very little work on it, I mean, I like, none. Zero work has happened on the Austrian accent as of yet. Uh, I, um... I think I was a bit of a optimist when I thought as to how uh, quick the move would be. And pretty much for the last two weeks, every second of my time has been... Um, Prepping for our new show. Getting our current content, uh, keeping our current content up to date, which I've also been slacking on. There's actually a, there's a huge, um, a huge dump that's going to be happening to our YouTube this week. Um, basically, we're getting a, a, a new YouTube video every single day this week, and that should get us back on track. Um, getting things out to our patrons, which, again, I had been slacking on. And getting the studio put together. And then, you know, doing these shows. <laughs> so... This really has been an incredibly busy, busy couple of weeks for me. And I, I, I do feel bad um, having not been able to get some of the things that I promised out. Because I like to be a man of my word. Um, Honestly, if, um, if I had had my way, the new shows that I wanted to uh, bring to the pack would have already been airing. I'm guessing that's going to happen next month. It's just there's not enough time in the day these days, you know? But I am making the most of it. I am, I'm, I'm very grateful to be busy. I'm very grateful um, to be putting all this stuff together. And I'm grateful that people are enjoying it. That's why I keep doing it. 100% why I keep doing it. I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing with everyone here at, at uh, Adventures Pack. Um, and I love that... I love that you all enjoy it. There we go. A little... A little honest moment from Stack. But anyway, the point of that is um, <laughs> I've done zero work on the Austrian accent. <laughs> yes, Faulty Boy, we're waiting for the, um, the the crypt to dry. So as we wait for the crypt to dry, we're just uh, we're hitting the fences with the wash. There we go. All right, those are good. That'll give us a good chunk of stuff. One day we will get a day that brings us in Austrian, Australian, and Zach Brath all in one city. Wow, man, man, pixie travel. You have some uh, some lofty dreams. We'll get there. All right, just a 
really quick touch up up here and then we can wash it. I'm not going to lie, for highlights we are going to be looking at dry brushing on this. Uh, did I see the picture in Discord? Um, I do. So yes, I do not have Discord up while I am streaming. Uh, although, I think I can. Typically, as a rule, I don't keep it open. Because um, some of the shows that we do require, like... Aw, Fury. That's really touching. Um... Yeah, look at those. Oh, hey, you know what? I think I actually have the, the Tin Man. Uh, I think a good friend of ours at the tavern gave us the Tin Man. Ah, oh, that... And I have that Scarecrow. I actually used that Scarecrow for uh, something. Ah, oh, and that... That's awesome. Paint him next? Well, maybe. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that full set. Maybe I'll do a. Maybe we'll do the Wizard of Oz set. That was the Scarecrow in the Maze, Shady Scott. Just finished your Human Druid. Time to start work on an Undead Priestess of Lol. Nice. Very nice. All right. We're going to give the urn Seraphim Sepia, which is a beautiful color. And this is really giving it that aged terracotta look. And by terracotta, I just mean like ceramic. If you're ever doing anything in the desert, Seraphim Sepia is the wash to have. It's amazing. Yeah, like look at that. How great does that look? Spoonkins, you would love to see me do the Wizard of Oz set. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make the full prom the promise of doing the full set because I got to make sure that my store has them. I'm pretty sure they have them. All right, still need that to dry. So actually, here's what we're gonna do. While that dries, I'm going to um, uh, I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna refill my water because I definitely need it. Uh, I'm also gonna grab and see if I do have uh, the Scarecrow. I I'll see if I've got them. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to be right back. Yeah, I miss you already. See ya.
And we're back with all the pumpkins in the chat. <laughs> oh, thank you, Leoric. Yeah, I think the, the crypt is coming out really nicely. So, still waiting on Mr. Dry. But while we wait on Mr. Dry, uh, this was one of the gifts that was sent to me via um, one of our one of our fans. And so, yeah, I, I had been wondering what this was. But that, uh, that's him. That's the, I'm pretty sure that's the Tin Man, yeah? So mystery solved. I had no idea what this was. I was so interested. So we got him. Then, let me show you a, um, a look into the world of collecting minis to paint. This box here, this is my box of um, opened unpainted minis. This isn't just my, uh, this doesn't even include my sealed uh, unpainted minis. So, I'm not gonna put this down. I'm pretty sure the Scarecrow is in here. I'm 100% just killing time until the thing dries. Oh, she's cool. I don't know, where'd her... Oh, she, yeah, she's got the arm attached. Pretty sure the Scarecrow's in here. Got some giant leeches, which is so much fun. Got a couple of metal miniatures. Lots of plastic miniatures that I should probably be storing it better than this. Tell you what, if I don't have that uh, Scarecrow and I'm just here looking through my stuff... <laughs> that's, that's egg on my face. A couple of giant toads. There he is. That's the scarecrow, right? So there we go. We got... Scarecrow and the Tin Man. Look at that. All right, so that'll be fun. We'll have those two to paint up. Uh, I will need to go and see if they've got the rest of them. Um, but I'll set those aside so we know we've at least got two of them. My goodness. Yep, this is, this is my, one of my boxes of shame. <clears throat> Immediately you see a dragon. Yes, you do see a dragon. There's a silver dragon in here. You demand a dragon painting stream. Zag, we've already done a dragon. We've, we've already done a dragon. Uh, Faulty Boy, what are minis normally made of? Uh, a lot of them are made of, I mean, this uh, rubbery plastic. Um, I don't know the exact plastic that they are that they are made of. Um, but then some of them, it's either this plastic, I think it's acrylic? I don't know. Um, or metal. Here is actually the metal mini that I might end up painting for you guys. Picked this one up a very long time ago. Don't know what he is, but he's he looks interesting. So, yeah, this is a very old Reaper mini. Anyway, that's enough show and tell. <sighs> All the dragons. You demand more dragons. Uh, you demand a dragon impression. Um... What, uh, I think that would depend on the color of the dragon, because I, I think immediately if I think of a dragon, I think of a much deeper voice. Uh, I think this would be good for the shadow dragon that I made. Also, I'm Batman. <laughs> uh, okay. Some minis that are larger than others, or they do come in different sizes. Oh, yeah, no, they come in a variety of sizes. Most typical minis are, um, we refer to them as, as medium size or like, throw actually, here, while, while we're chatting, because this is still very wet. We still have a lot of drying to, to wait on this. So um, here, we'll just have a little, a little bit of talking for some time while that's happening. Uh, so yeah, most minis are, this is referred to as uh, hero sized or, or medium size. So they're the size of a normal uh person creature yes we've got uh cthulhu which is kind of which is the biggest mini that i've painted so far which uh, we refer to as we refer to it as our bigature 
Oh, I'm going to have to be getting up to get you guys some more stuff, aren't I? Okay, I'm going to keep talking. Keep listening. Uh, let me grab some stuff. Don't go anywhere. I'm still here. Count them. Still, still here. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So. Miniature sizes also vary. You can get uh, larger creatures, such as this, uh, this Remoraz, which we painted a while back. <laughs> this is what we call the chair string. Yes, this, the chair is the um, uh, star of the stream. I know what you guys came here for. So yeah, so we've got this Remoraz that we painted, which, you know, if you compare it to a larger size or to a normal size creature, it's pretty big. The largest miniature that I've painted uh, is this Cthulhu, which uh, we did recently. And again, if you compare that to a normal size mini, it gets pretty hefty. And then, there we go. Did I seal you? I'm pretty sure I sealed him. Uh, but then, as far as, like, dragons and stuff go, we get things that are about this size. Now, this was 3D printed. Um, obviously, with 3D printing, you can do things in a uh, in a variety of sizes. Um, but the largest thing that I have printed and painted, uh, it wasn't a... Um, uh, it wasn't a, a, a miniature. It was a piece of scenery... And that was the um, uh, the shipwreck. Uh, oh, looks like a spider decided to hang out on the shipwreck. Oh yeah, so that was that was our shipwreck. We did this very early on on the channel. Again, this was 3D printed, but this is the biggest thing on my uh, my shelf, and it comes apart into multiple parts. You can actually play the interior of this set piece. Whoop. So there we go. So there's a variety of sizes for you. Uh, as far as small miniatures go, oh, I've actually got one right on hand that I can grab if I go out this way. <laughs> this is just, um, this is the perfect screen, isn't it? This is exactly what you wanted. Uh, let's go to see, to here. Where'd you go? I just had you. Okay, as then as far as smaller sized creatures go, I didn't paint this one, but it's it's a good example. Uh, you can get things that are much, much smaller. So again, compare that to an average size something. This guy's slightly bigger than an average size, but you get the idea. And you can do things as tiny as uh, a bottle. Um, so, yeah, so the sizing changes dependent on the, the need. Now, for pretty much everything, I, I see that we're talking some uh, br uh, brush sizes. Pretty much everything I use this. This is a number one uh, brush. And... You can you can get smaller bristle brushes. You've you may have seen that I've been using um, something. Yeah, there we go. This this one on my uh, or over here. This is great for small detail. Uh, but to be honest, I think a number one uh, brush is this will last you for everything, depending on what you're doing. I have painted large pieces with this brush. I've painted tiny pieces with this brush. It's all you need. Um, would you just get minis to paint and not play with because I don't have anybody to play with? Um, yeah, th I mean, that's fair. Uh, there, there are people who they paint, but they don't play. They, they just enjoy the, the painting of it. And that's, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with, oh shoot, I just did that. I didn't need to do that to that brush. I hadn't used that brush yet. 
I'm so used to grabbing this brush. Um, all right, let me bring us back to the main cam so you can see what we're going on here. Um, there's some wash that is pooled. I'm gonna do my darndest to pull it away. It's definitely gonna stain in a fashion that I don't want. But I think we'll be able to fix it with highlights. Oh, a lot of it going on. It's okay. It is okay. There are worse things that can happen. And when this is 100, the fault of me being way too aggressive with my washes. Do I have dimensions? I don't really have dimensions. Um, I mean, the Tin Man, he's about, you know, an inch and a half tall, like an eight. Oh wait, hold on. I've got, I've got dimensions right on here. Yeah, he is about, hey, look at that. Uh, a little over an inch and a half tall by about an inch wide. So, so yeah. Having to run off? Well, have a good one. Thank you for dropping back in. And we will be seeing you around. All right, after all that talking, my gosh. Whew. All right, let's get to highlighting this. I can highlight most of this. Did I grab a dry brush while I was up? No, I, I told myself I was going to, but I didn't. Like a darn fool. I do have a brush that I specifically like to use for dry brushing, but I can't seem to find it. <laughs> that got a little weird there. That was just up and down and up and down and up and down. But hi, we're back. We're gonna actually do some work now. Gonna dry brush these pillars with their original color. I'm not gonna get too fancy with it. That is one thing I actually would suggest is um, if you know you're going to do some dry brushing, get a brush specifically for that. Because dry brushing can be um, somewhat damaging to a brush.
This part is not looking great. Okay, hold on. I gotta take a second. I'm actually, I'm, I'm really messing this up. What's wrong? Let me bring this whole brush set over. Hold on. Give me one second. Okay. Let's do this. We're going to dry brush the whole thing. Sorry, guys. That got weird for a second there. I don't know, I don't know what was up with me. This is, is not a good dry brush. This uh, not a good dry brush. Where is my dry brush? It'll work, right? Maybe. All right, that's look, that's looking a lot better. That's looking a lot better. Hmm, man. That's great. There we go. Alrighty. That's okay. There we go. Now I'm getting into my groove. Oh yeah, now the camera is, so it's out of focus if I have it down here, but then it's in focus if I have it up here. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't have a very decent, um, we don't have a huge depth of field on our camera. So 
Well, it's 100% dependent on where I'm holding it at the time. Uh, and that was just on me. I, I was just trying to focus on what was going on at that moment. Okay. It's looking good. It's looking good, looking good, looking good. All right, so last thing I think that I need to do, I know there was a bunch of details on here that I wanted to get done, but to be honest, I've kind of run out of time. Um, let's get some, some color going on on the urn. Let's get something on the roof. So for the roof, we're gonna go with just a slightly brighter, ooh, not, yeah, we're gonna go with the slightly brighter red. Just slightly. I'm just gonna, yeah. Nope. Nope. We can use colors that we already have to create a highlight. That'll be good. So I'm just gonna take some of this color that we used for the urn, mix it in with the red. There we go. That's what we needed. Take that color, get it off of my brush as much as possible, traverse that on, perfect, and then for the urn, I am going to need just a tad bit of white mixed in with that. Not much, just a little bit. Again, perfect. Not perfect with that brush. Let's do it. Let's do it with this one. It's gonna be fine. And then just take that. There we go. That has done it. We are all highlighted up. Our washes are dry. Uh, it was a very quick and dirty highlight job. To be oh my gosh, yeah. To be honest, this thing. Um, <laughs> I. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. It's not the best. I, I feel like, I feel as though terrain needs a lot more time than I have to dedicate to it on a single painting in place. But I like it. It looks, it looks good. It looks good. So here's the thing that I am really excited for. So let me go ahead and get the uh, camera. Focused in a different fashion. Um, all right, so if we bring the camera down here, you guys are going to get a better look at our whole set. Well, actually, this will work because we've got the green of the, uh, the ground. So let, let's take a look at the whole setting that we have set up and ready to go. tack off and there we go so this 
So, we have our crypt. That is nicely encompassed. by our graveyard walls. We'll build up right here. We have a myriad of gravestones. got the Banshee. You've got the Spirit Summons that is not letting you out. And we have the Necromancer. So, alright, this is going to look weird, but you know what? I'm going off the rails today. This, this is how this is working. Getting a movable camera. figure out how to move it. There we go. That is what we created this whole month, month and a half, on our, uh, on painting in place. We've got a few more uh, graveyard walls, actually, so we can actually, we can make this just a little bit bigger. Um, but that's it. That's our, that's our graveyard battle map. <laughs> I think it turned out fantastic. As I said, uh, I am going to take much better pictures of that. I'll be putting those up on Instagram. I'll throw them into the uh, um, I'll throw them into the Discord. Um, I don't think, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and get them done today. Um, I think I've got the time to do that. So we'll get that done. It's gonna look awesome. There's still some things that I need to finish on these. I still need to finish the fences. They're not fully done. They haven't even been highlighted, but you know what? It still looks great. Wow. I Okay, so I enjoyed doing this thing where we had a, a goal, a thing that we were trying to get from the start to the finish, and we had this cool finished product at the end of it. This, this was cool. Um, it was... I am really enjoying doing the the just the, the single minis because I think the timing on that works out great that I'm able to get one of these guys done per uh, per episode. So I think that is where Miniature Monday is going to be headed. Um, as I said, I've got this other uh, this other crypt that I'm not 100% sure what to do with. I can't recycle it now because it's already been primed. Um, yeah. I, I might send it to um, I might send it to one of our local shops. I might give it away. I, I don't know. I don't know. If any if any of you are interested, let me know. Uh, but yeah, guys, this was a fun month. This was uh, the, it's a fun way to end our spoopy season uh, and finishing up with with this crypt. I I do really like how this turned out, and it it looks fantastic on the table ties the scene in beautifully and it worked out brilliant with the necromancer like honestly they look like they were made for each other this is so sweet um so yeah i think we're gonna go ahead and call that there um i d unfortunately i'm not gonna do a post-show hangout today uh folks because boy i gotta i gotta tear this down i gotta take the picture um and i actually have to get ready for some stuff happening tonight but um yeah, you all have. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, again, our next show it's uh, it's not the gauntlet. Our next show is on Wednesday. It is our World of Darkness show. Uh, look forward to seeing any and any of you there. And we will see you next time on Painting in Place. Have a great week, everyone.